What does it take to reach $100,000 a year in your online business? Well, today I want to give you 13 exact steps that one of my star students took to reach that six-figure mark in his online business. We're going to get really practical today. You don't need to do all 13 of these, but I'm sure you can cherry pick a handful of these that will explode your growth this year in 2022. So if you're ready to take your business from where it is to hopefully hitting that six-figure mark this year, which is a great goal, then stay tuned. This is going to be an amazing episode for you. Let's discuss. Welcome to episode 141 of The Graham Cochran Show, where I'm here to help you build your online business, work less, and live and give more. I'm your host, Graham Cochran. Happy New Year. It's 2022, at least when you're seeing this, which is awesome. I hope you had an amazing New Year with family and friends. I hope you've looked back to 2021 and you want to replicate some of the success and then maybe avoid some of the the pitfalls and make 2022 your best year in life and business yet. And to that end, I have a huge announcement to make right here, right now. I do not want you to miss this as we're kicking off the new year. I love the new year. I love January. I love new beginnings. I've been thinking for a while, what can I do to help you maximize this new year and kickstart your business in 2022? Well, here's what I'm going to do. Next week, I am hosting my first ever live challenge. It is the five-day, six-figure challenge. And that's right. We're going to go live for five days, and I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to reach six figures and beyond in your business in 2022. This is for online business owners and course creators only. This is not like consultant work necessarily or product business or drop shipping. If you're an online business owner, you're creating courses, memberships. If you want to reach six figures this year or double your income this year without working more hours and without adding any new customers, this is for you. And the best part is it's free. It's free and it's over multiple days. Hopefully you can catch all of it. They'll be teaching every day, live Q&A every day. I'm taking all of next week to do this with you, okay? I'm setting aside a lot of time to do this with you because I want you to win and I want you to have some of my best material for free and I want to motivate you. I love just having like a, let's just do it together as a challenge kind of thing because it will motivate you to take action and action is where results come from. So, Details are at grahamcochran.com slash challenge. If you're watching on YouTube, you can click the link below. Sign up, get your spot. You have to sign up for this. It's free, but you need to sign up before we go live next Monday, January 10th for the first day of this five-day six figures challenge. I'm gonna be here to coach you for the whole week to help you reach six figures this year or double your income this year, again, without working more hours or adding any new customers. If that sounds ridiculous, I'm going to share all of the details with you. A lot of the goods are there. If you go to grahamcochran.com slash challenge, you can see what kind of stuff I'm going to be teaching you and some of the, the details of that. It's really, really good. I'm bringing some of my best material. I want to do this for you to kick off the year right. Okay, so you're going to be there, right? grahamcochran.com slash challenge starts on Monday, January 10th. Go there now. And if you're somehow watching this after the fact and you've missed it, I'm sorry, sign up and we'll get you details if we're going to do this again. This is a one-time thing. The five-day, six-figure challenge. Be there. It'll be amazing. Okay. So for today's episode, uh, I thought I'd do something a little different. I thought I would let one of my star students teach. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll teach it for him. Um, but one of my star students, Antoine, He's been a part of my community, Graham's six-figure coaching community since the beginning. Uh, Just a superstar student, good guy. And it's been fun to watch him grow his business. He had a business. It was making some money, but to see him scale it, um, he posted all these things in our community last month. He's doing $12,000 a month now. So he's, he's, he's crossed over $100,000 a year. He's doing $12,000 a month, and I'm sure it's grown by the time this episode's coming out. But he had an amazing post that he shared inside the community that I, I wanted to pull out here because it's so good and so tactical, and it's a case study. So view this as a case study of what has worked for him 
because I know some of these ideas will work for you. You don't have to do all of these, but what he shared were 13 things that helped him get to $100,000 a year plus in his online business. And he's in a hobby business. He teaches guitar stuff, okay? He's, he's a guitar teacher, doing $12,000 a month, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just literally go through his 13 things. These are 13 steps he took that have, because people said, how did you reach that level, Antoine? What did you do? What I love about Antoine and many of the people in my community is they give the specifics. So here are the specifics. And what I want you to listen for is not, I don't want you to refute any of these things and go, oh, that won't work for me. None of that here. There's no room for that junk here. Okay, this is a new year. This is a new you. I want Antoine's success to be your success. If you aren't making $100,000 a year in your business yet, this is the year for you. If you're like, I'm making 40,000. This is the year you double that to 80,000. Okay? This is the year. The way you do that is to do some of the things that Antoine is I'm going to walk you through right now of these 13 things. So my goal for you is listen to this list with an open mind and listen for the two to three things that like you instantly connect with like I could do that. I I I was about to do that or I've heard of that or I, that's new or that's exciting to me. I want you to latch on to those two to three things that are the things that you feel most connected to in the moment, your gut feeling, because that's what I want you to then go work on. I also want you to come to my challenge next week because I'm going to give you some practical stuff to help you do this. But take Antoine's success. He's climbed the mountain to the six-figure mountain and has come back down and he's sharing everybody with everybody in the community, 13 things to help him get there. You don't need to do all 13. I'm not giving you a list of 13 things to do, but I want you to listen to this entire list and look for two to three things that you're going to implement in your business this year, hopefully this quarter, maybe this month. Don't push yourself too hard, but I'm telling you, this is your year. Okay. Without further ado, these are all Antoine's ideas. These are all things that I do, I've taught, he's been doing, but this is these are what's worked for him. Number one, launching a membership. I, I don't disagree. If you're only doing courses, that's great. I love courses. They're my favorite. You know what you need to launch next? A membership. If you already have one solid course, launch a membership this year. Why? Two reasons. Number one, recurring revenue. There's nothing more beautiful than recurring revenue. Somebody signs up and then they pay you every month to stay in that community. It's a beautiful thing. And yes, people will cancel, but new people will join. If you do it right, if you do it right, your membership will stair step up and over time just net grow. As people come and cancel, you'll have net growth, which means every month it becomes more valuable and prints more money for you. Um, that's the number one reason why you should have a membership. Just the recurring revenue is just really beautiful and gives you predictable income. And number two, memberships give you a great opportunity to in, interact and engage with your students. And you get to learn more about them, which helps you serve them and people like them better. I have formed friendships with people in my membership. I've hired people from my membership who are now on my team, um, but I've learned a lot more about my target avatar, my market from my membership, more than my courses because there's more interaction in the membership, which is just great for you. Great reconnaissance and research. So from Antoine launching membership, help get him over that six figure bump. Number two, adding upsells. Oh my gosh. If you use a platform like Kajabi and a lot of other platforms do this and you aren't using upsells, you're leaving money on the table. An upsell is, is McDonald's when you buy a hamburger saying, would you like fries with that? An upsell is when you know, you're know you at the checkout counter uh, and somebody offers you um, a extended warranty or uh, they offer you, there's, or there's just junk like junk food, literally at the, the checkout counter of your grocery store and there's like candy bars. You're like, oh, I, I could use a candy bar. I need some gum offering somebody more at checkout. Upsells is kind of a junk drawer term for cross sells, down sells. You could throw in order bumps in there as well, but having something else to offer, sort of a, would you like this also, since you're buying this, they've already said yes to buy something. Traditionally, an upsell follows immediately after that. On a platform like Kajabi, they can say, yes, I wanna buy your course gram. They can enter the credit card, they can click buy, and then it takes them to a page that says, hey, 
so glad you just bought my course. I wanted to offer you something else. Maybe it's half off of one of your other courses. Maybe it's a bundle. Maybe it's a coaching package that's discounted. Maybe it's something you don't sell anywhere else. I don't know. Offer them something relevant for more money. Not everyone's going to say yes, but a lot of people will. And that's it's going to increase your average order value. And it's one click. They can just say yes or no. And with Kajabi, at least if they say yes, they don't have to enter their credit card again. It just adds it to their order and you make more money. So adding upsells was huge for Antoine. Again, it's not the thing, but it's one of the things. Number three, setting up an auto webinar to sell a higher priced bundle, okay? Auto webinars are powerful tools. Why? Because webinars are powerful tools. Because you're teaching somebody, you're bringing your best value for 30, 45 minutes. And on the heels of that, once you've built trust and you've built credibility and you've delivered a ton of value and goodwill, when you offer something that costs money, but it's going to take what they've learned deeper, oh, that, that's just such a natural transition to the pitch where people are like, man, I want that. So webinars in general sell. An auto webinar is like you doing a webinar 24-7 without you having to do it. And then you can sell higher priced items, things that are over $500 on the back of a webinar, even an auto webinar. So in Antoine's case, he was selling a bundle of some of his courses put together. I've been doing this for the last four years on the Recording Revolution. I have a webinar that has some amazing hacks for recording. It's a ton of amazing teaching that you can just take that and roll with it. And at the end of that, I pitch all of my courses bundled together in this mega bundle plus bonus courses that you can't buy from me from me individually at like 60% off. And, and they have a limited time to buy it and it's a great offer. So Antoine's doing the same thing, setting up an auto webinar to sell a higher price bundle. Number four, he simplified his funnel. He said he has a seven day funnel instead of a way too long funnel. Now, this is interesting. Your funnel is that initial sequence of emails that people get subscribed to when they join your list because they downloaded your lead magnet. You should have a funnel that should over deliver, add value, establish credibility, and pitch the most relevant offer in your arsenal within those first five to seven days. Have at least one thing in your funnel. You can add more. I'm not opposed to funnels that are longer than seven days. The longest funnel I had was 45 days. I offered five products in that funnel. It did great. You don't want to wait 45 days to pitch. You want to pitch within those first three to four to five to six days. But it sounds like Antoine has grown his revenue by having a shorter, more focused seven-day funnel. So maybe you need to take a look at your funnel. How's it performing? Related to that, number five, Antoine said selling sooner. I 100% agree with this, selling sooner. So both in his funnel and directly in his lead magnet, excuse me, on day zero. Okay, so... He has another, I won't, I won't skip ahead. He's got, he's got another one that's related to this. But if you're waiting a week or two to like build rapport and nurture your new lead before you offer them something, that's old school. That's antiquated. You're missing it. If you've been creating content online, videos, podcasts like these, you're already nurturing people. And when they opt in, as long as you over deliver, give them what they opted in for and more, that can be in tomorrow or the next day's email. That could be instantly. Um, that can be with a, a, an auto webinar that you offer on the back end of your lead magnet. A lot of ways to over deliver and add more value. You can then pitch at any point after that. I, I wrote a piece for uh, Ramit Sethi's blog, Growth Lab, a few years ago about how I've increased revenue by moving my pitch sooner and sooner into the relationship. It used to be you know, 14 days and it was seven days and it's become three days. And now I pitch on day zero as well. So day zero is the day somebody opts in and there's lots of ways to do that. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but look at where you are pitching in your sequence. Could you pitch a little bit earlier? The people that just signed up for your email list are the people who are most interested in you and most likely to buy from you right now because they found you, they're interested in you. So don't wait just offer them something good sooner. So that's been working for Antoine. Number six, he says, refining my YouTube strategy to get more reach. Antoine had a, a YouTube video go viral this year out of nowhere. And I think it's done over a million views. Um, and, and he had, that's, that's way out of character for his, his list. And it was so fun in the community to watch his updates. Like, oh my gosh, 100,000 views in the first day. Like, 200,000, like just, we were all like cheering for him. Like, go, go Antoine, go. Um, 
And what's interesting is what he learned from that, learned really before that to create that viral video, what he learned from that viral video. And he's just become more intentional to like study his YouTube analytics, pay attention to what people want to see, what they click on, and to see if he can deliver more of that. He'll tell you the same thing I'll tell you. You're not shooting for virality every time. It's really hard to do and it's not really the goal. You don't need to go viral to make a good living but you want to do the research that leads to viral videos because it, it's really just figuring out what people want, what they're searching for, what they click on, what they keep watching when they do click on it. So yeah, refine your YouTube strategy if you use YouTube to get more reach to more people. Number seven, creating pricing tiers and making the upper tier irresistible. Okay, tiered pricing is huge strategy, meaning you have one version of the course or product you're offering, then you have a more expensive version of the course or product you're offering that adds more value. Don't give them one option, give them at least two, sometimes three, and make them subsequently more expensive. And I love how he said, not just having pricing tiers for his offers, but making that upper tier irresistible. So people are like, crap, I have to have that. I want the more expensive one. That's, that's, that's the marker of a good premium tier is that it's, it's gotta be better. Not everyone can afford it or can justify spending the money on it even if they can't afford it, but they should all want it, right? Think about cars. There's not just one trim of a car you wanna buy. There's the basic, there's a, a upper, there's an elite trim. They call them different things. But the, the upper trim of that car has all the bells and whistles, like the one you see in the commercial that has the panoramic sunroof, that has the bigger rims, that has all the technology, that has all whatever, the leather seats, the sport package, the turbo engine. What you see in the commercial is the premium tier. They show you the base price, so you're like, oh, starting at whatever, but it's, you're gonna pay a lot more to get the stuff that you want. Make that upper tier super irresistible. I love that. Number eight, testing pricing elasticity. He says, I'm selling my flagship course for more than I thought I could. What is price elasticity? Think of an elastic band, right, a rubber band. An elastic band, you, you, you think you can pull it, but you can always stretch it more and more and more and more. And there's a point at which it can stretch its farthest. Pricing is like an elastic band. There is no one set price for your course. A lot of people think, oh, I came up with a price, that's the price, that's it. The reality is the price is what the market will pay for it. And you don't know until you experiment. So don't be afraid to experiment by raising your prices. And so you wanna stretch it and stretch it and stretch it to the point that, it's still stretchy. There is a point where it'll snap and people won't buy it. And then if you hit that point, you can back it back down. But you have to find what is that sweet spot. He's made more money by testing it and he's selling his main course for more than he thought he could. Number nine, he added more promotions to his yearly calendar. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a secret. If you promote your stuff to your list more often, you're gonna make more money. Oh, surprising, right? The more you promote, the more you make, and yet we don't do it. Oh, well, I, I don't. I don't want to promote that much to my list. What? 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 Are you running a business? Or are you trying to become best friends with everybody online? You're running a business. Businesses promote unashamedly because they have good products that help people. Why would you not promote? Why would you be afraid? Oh, well, Graham, people might unsubscribe from my list. The goal isn't to have a massive email list. The goal is to make money. Who cares how many people are on your list? Who cares how many people unsubscribe? Do you know that every time I send an email to my list at the Recording Revolution, of free content, not a pitch, any email, 250 people unsubscribe every time. That's just statistics. The list is 300,000 people strong. Every time an email goes out, it reminds a couple hundred people, oh yeah, I've been meaning to unsubscribe, so they do. There's nothing personal here, this is statistics. So the more you, I'm being silly because the more you promote, the more money you make. Now, you get to decide how much is too much. I'm willing to bet you're not promoting enough because most of us are insecure and afraid of like upsetting people. And that's why we don't make money because we're not thinking like a business, we're thinking about like, I don't know, blasting people with nonsense. You're not blasting people with nonsense. You're building good products that change the world. Go change the world, promote. Antoine made more money by adding some more promotions to his promotional calendar. Number 10, he says, making free mini course lead magnets that are better than other people's tripwire products. Okay, 
A tripwire product is a low priced offer that you make to somebody that's a no brainer. It could be seven bucks up to 37, 47 bucks, depending on what it is, but it's steeply discounted for what it is. Like it should not be this cheap. And you, you make a point of that. You're like, Duke, I just want to offer you something stupid. And so people are like, man, I, I'd be dumb not to buy this because it's only 10 bucks. It's only 15 bucks, only 20 bucks, but it's really a $300 course or bundle. They buy it. And now you, what you've done is created a buyer. Because a buyer is different than just an email subscriber because the buyer has put out their credit card. And we know statistically that buyers are 16 times more likely to buy something else than a non-buyer. So now we could offer them more stuff and we could work them up our product suite to all the way to our high ticket product, whatever that might be. So a lot of people offer tripwire products. And I love, Antoine has a strategy where he offers a free mini course as, as his core lead magnet. And it's a really good mini course and it converts well, and he's taking pride in making a mini course that he gives away for free better than some people's paid tripwire products. Um, I think why this leads to more revenue for him is because I know that A, it converts well to getting people on his email list, but B, he promotes his flagship course with a special offer inside of that mini course. So people opt in, they watch it, and that day they're more likely to buy his flagship course because they got some value and an offer. It really does, it's a cool strategy to offer value for free and then pitch your flagship course all inside the mini course, lead magnet. Number 11, he says he repurposed more niche courses that didn't sell as well previously, repurposed them as bonuses in upper tiers of my best-selling courses to increase the average order value. So I love this, right? So he, he launched some sort of micro courses. They could be mini courses, some niche courses. They didn't sell as well as he hoped, um, but he built it and he knows it's valuable and it's there. One of the, my favorite words in online business is repurpose. Repurpose, repurpose, repurpose. If you've done the work once, don't reinvent the wheel. What can you repurpose more strategically in your business? One of the things he did was repurpose some of these little mini niche courses that didn't sell well and position them as bonuses in these upper tiers. Remember how he said he has made more money by creating tiers of his courses and making the upper version, the more expensive version of his courses irresistible? He's doing that by bundling in other courses that he's already created. And so in effect, he's selling them that way. He's selling them on the heels of a course that sells well by creating insane value. And I've been doing this as well. I'll use niche courses as uh, up, upsells, upsells directly or order bumps or as part of a bundle in an upper tier. I love it. Don't have to create something new. Number 12, we're almost there. And I love this one, if you know me. He says, taking Fridays and weekends off to feel more refreshed when I work the other four days. I did an episode on this a while back on why I think you should take Fridays off. Uh, and there's a million reasons, but what I love is that Antoine got to one of the core reasons, which is when you rest well, it's counterintuitive. If you say, if you work less, you think you'll make less money, but the reality is you can make the same amount of money in fewer hours because most of us are wildly inefficient with our time. So number of hours does not equal money. But even if you feel like you're as efficient as possible, if you were to take one extra day off a week, so he doesn't work on weekends because nobody should work on weekends uh, if you're doing an online business. And then he took Fridays off. He took me up on that. And I remember when he decided to do that, he started posting pictures of himself walking through the woods on his days off. Uh, he tried to get out in nature. You're taking Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. That gives you time to recharge, rest well. Even if you have errands and stuff you got to do on the weekend, you have a whole extra day. You could nap, you could read a book, you could walk outside of nature, you could sit by the pool, sit by the beach. When you come into the office on Monday morning after three days off, 72 hours off, you can feel so much more refreshed. When you're refreshed, your brain fires quicker. Ideas come to you faster. You probably will get more ideas on your day off that you don't have to feel bad about. Just write them down on a notebook. Write them down on your phone, in your notes app. Like, oh, that's a good idea for a piece of content. Oh, I should add that upsell. Oh, I should do this launch. Oh, I should try this idea. Ideas and creativity come to you when you separate from work so that, in Antoine's words, he is more refreshed when he works those other four days so he can produce better. 
he, he's going to create better content. He's going to be more creative. He's going to be more decisive, more innovative, and he's going to be more efficient. When you're tired, you drag. When you're tired, you fall into ruts and do the same old dumb stuff. So ironically, taking Fridays off and the weekends off helped him work more efficiently, more refreshed on those other four days, which has allowed him to scale his income. Not as tactical and as clear to be, well, how did that turn to more money? Trust me, the less you work, the more you'll make because you're gonna be more clear headed and you're gonna be super efficient with your time and just do the stuff that matters. Which leads to his 13th and final step to help him reach $100,000 a year in his business. And I love this. He says, saying no to everything else that doesn't align with my goals. Can we just pause here for a moment? Antoine, thank you for teeing us up for a new year. We're talking about New Year's resolutions, new year, new me, new you. We're all so new. One of the hardest things to do in life and especially in business, is to say no to opportunities. We have so much fear of saying no, and I am putting myself squarely in that camp. I have said yes to interviews I shouldn't have said yes to, um, collaborations I shouldn't have said yes to in the past, uh, content I shouldn't have said yes to. Uh, I mean, so many things that I'm like, that, 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 you know, that could be good without asking what Antoine just asked, does this align with my goals? Now, you have long-term goals, hopefully, like for my wife and I, we have tons of long-time goals, but they're pretty simple. Like one has become completely financially independent. So meaning we wouldn't even have to have businesses, like no businesses, no work, just live off our investments if we want to. We're not going to, but we, that's a goal we have, right? Long-term goal. There's a, a billion other long-term goals. But then you've got like, this year goals. And if one of your goals this year is to double your income or reach six figures a year, like Antoine's done, then you got to think through what is it going to take to get there? You're going to have to probably do some new stuff and you'll probably have to stop doing some of the stuff you've always been doing because you can't do it all. And this is the lie that so many people believe is that I can do it all even if they know at some level in their heart that they can't do it all, they try anyway, as if like, well, maybe I can do it all. You can't. You can't. Life is a series of choices. You have to say no. I mean, in the words of Greg McCune or McCown, I never pronounced the darn guy's name right, best-selling author of Essentialism, you have to say no to the trivial many so you can say yes to the vital few. And the reality is most things in your life aren't vital. Most things in your business aren't vital. That's why I can confidently say you don't need to be spending five days a week in your business or even four days a week in your business because most of what you're doing is not that critical to your business's success. It might feel critical, posting to social, doing more reels, jumping on TikTok. None of that matters. It doesn't matter unless you're doing brand deals and you have a million followers. I get that's not what's putting money in your pocket for most of you. For 99% of you, you're doing it because you see other people doing it, but you haven't stopped to ask yourself, does this align with my goals? A, do I like doing reels and TikTok videos? Because if you do like them, okay, well then you could put that in the camp of, well, I like it. Like I like the stupid dances. Then you still have to ask yourself, does it put money in your pocket? But at least you like it. Most people that are doing it don't really like it. They're doing it because other people do it and they think they have to do it, so that, which is a non-starter for me if you don't like it. Number two, the more important question is, does this feed my business though? Like tangibly, does it? It, it might. If it does, I won't argue with you. Keep doing it, okay? If it doesn't, or if you can't, definitively say, well, yeah, that I can point to the revenue it makes. Why, why are you doing it? It takes a lot of time to create those videos. I know they look effortless when you scroll through your feed. It takes time, guys. I, I was walking around the Curtis Dixon Park, this park right downtown Tampa. I was walking to get lunch, walking back, and there's these two girls. I could see them from like forever away, and I walked past them, and then I kept looking back. A solid 20 minutes from seeing them as I approach and 10 minutes passing them, they were trying to do this one stupid TikTok dance they had the phone propped up and they kept, they're losing 20, 30, 40 minutes of their life for something that's going to disappear. And I don't, I, unless that's, they're going to do a brand deal, they ain't going to make any money in their, in their bank account. 
I don't know what they're doing. And I, I was, as I'm walking back on my lunch break, I was probably making a few hundred bucks while I was getting lunch, not doing anything because of the systems, because of the business. So Antoine is, I, I love that he landed with this because it really just puts the, the pressure on us to say, wow, okay, all these great tactics that Antoine just shared. I could do all these things, upsells, auto webinars, price elasticity, blah, blah, blah. Are you saying yes to everything and taking on everything because you think you should, because you think this might be your big break, because you're afraid of saying no, because you don't want to be rude? Or do you have the guts to A, know what your goals are, long-term, mid-term, short-term? Like, what are your goals this month? What are your goals this quarter? What are your goals this calendar year? Do you even know what your goals are? And then do you have the guts, and I'm talking to myself here, to say no to everything? But I had this conversation with Shay a few weeks ago I have all these cool things I want to roll out this year. And uh, I was talking about all of them. And she was like, how are you going to do all those while you've got your book about to come out? I was like, crap. You're right. God, I, I, they're all, like, I want to do these things. I, I think I can justify the things that I've chosen to do. But I, can, can I really do them all in Q1? Uh, no, I can't. I mean, I could, but I'll die. And is, what's the point of that? I really need to focus on my book. It, it drops in March. I, I, that's, that's, that's my most important thing. So I had to say no to certain things. I had to punt some ideas for, some, some are going to be hard no's and some are going to be no for now. Like I'll revisit this in Q2 or Q3. And I hate that because especially when you have an idea you're excited about, you want to roll with it, I get it. But my challenge to you is, is Antoine's challenge to all of us, can, do we have the guts to say no to everything that doesn't align with our goals? <whistles> Love it, Antoine. Okay, there you go. 13 things that helped Antoine get to $100,000 a year. Again, he's doing 12K a month right now, if not more by the time this is coming out. It's awesome. Antoine's a superstar. And he's in a hobby niche, teaching guitar, friends. I had somebody say, well, you're only making money because it's a business niche. No, bro. I made millions teaching broke musicians how to record music, specifically broke musicians because they had no money for expensive gear. That was my target market. You can make a great living selling to a hobbyist market. Antoine's done it. You can do it. So I want to help you. Here's, I mean, here's 13 things that can help you right now. I want to give you more. I want you to come next week to my five-day six-figure challenge. We're going to spend five days together live and I'm going to teach you every single day. I'm going to bring some of my best material on what you can be doing this year to at least double your income. And for a lot of you, reach six figures this year. Why not? This is the year. Why not? Why not you? Why not now? So this is free. It costs nothing to come to this. And I'm not even doing like a one-time webinar. I'm going to just go live for five days straight just to bring you my best, okay? I wanted to kick off the year like a crazy person. So it's gonna be live training, live Q&A each day. Please come, go to grahamcochran.com slash challenge. You have to sign up to come. This is not happening on YouTube. grahamcochran.com slash challenge. It's free. Come, tell your friends, tell them to sign up. Even if you come for one day, you're gonna be able to take away stuff that you can use to grow your business. Again, this is for online course creators, membership site owners, online business owners, right? This is for you. If you've, if you've launched and you want to scale, I want to help you double your income or reach six figures this year without having to work more hours, because I'm not a fan of that, or add new customers. I'm talking about taking your existing traffic, your existing product suite, and figuring out how to scale this thing, okay? And no, we're not going to be running ads. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do ads myself, so I'm not going to tell you to run ads. Again, no more, no more extra hours and adding no new customers. Just with your, the current size of your business, I want to help you reach six figures this year or at least double your income in 2022. GrahamCochran.com slash challenge. Please come hang out with me. Starts on Monday, January 10th. So hopefully you'll be there next Monday. Sign up, click the link below if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you know where to go. GrahamCochran.com slash challenge. All right, my friend. Happy New Year. I'm excited to work with you closely. Hopefully I'll see you on the challenge next week. Stay healthy, stay safe. Let's make this the best year yet. See you on another episode. Awesome.